Okay, <laughs> ready when you are. All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Average Bros Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Tyler. I'm Anthony. And I'm Mike. Uh, If you haven't already, go check us out at our website. We are still working on updating it, but uh, go check it out. Maybe you can see um, our team breakdowns. We're about to put everything up there with all that kind of stuff. Uh, It's at AverageBrosFantasyFootball.com. Follow us on Instagram at AverageBros underscore Fantasy Football. Uh, we're also on Twitter. We're on Twitch. Uh, we're going to start doing some live streams on Twitch. All the Twitter, Twitch, even we got a Facebook page. Uh, it's all it's forward slash Average Bros FFP. So if you want to go check out any of that stuff, go ahead. It should be in the link. It sh- link should be down below, um, below this YouTube video. Um, if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, go check us out on YouTube. We got full video format. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, Tyler, you want to talk about what All right, we're yeah. getting so into So today? on today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to break down the top 50 overall players uh, for PPR rankings. Now, this is uh, via fantasypros.com. So this is the top 50 rankings for the, the expert rankings. Go on, experts. <laughs> experts. So we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, the number one overall uh, player right now is Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Anthony, you want to start us off on that? What we're going to do with these players, we're going to try and touch on a little bit of their floor and ceiling. So you guys uh, – you know, you could, you could, this guy has a, fl- a ceiling of being the number one overall, or this guy has a floor of, you know, he could finish anywhere from what's his, ra- what's his range of outcomes? You know, Le'Veon Bell, we're going to start with him. His range of outcomes are, I mean, unless bearing injury, he's, he's not going to finish outside the top 12. So we're going to try and give you guys a realistic range of outcomes with each player. And within the top 10, top 12, it's going to be pretty, you know, it's not going to vary as much. But then when we start hitting those second tier players, you're going to see where some of these guys could finish. Um, you know, maybe outside the top twenty-four, and we're gonna give you guys those uh, floors and ceilings. Cool, cool. So yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna give you our opinion, and like I said, we're, we're, we're just a couple of average bros with an above average fantasy knowledge. Uh, we we're not experts, you know. Everyone's just entitled to their opinion, and uh, we're just gonna give you our opinion on what we think, and we're gonna give you some numbers and some stats. I'm a big stat guy. I believe, you know, men lie, women lie, numbers do not lie. So I love looking at the numbers and the averages and, and seeing how those pan out. So. Uh, yeah, Le'Veon Bell, number one. I mean, there's not much you can really hate on, hate about this guy. Um, you look at Le'Veon, his – trying to nitpick and find his floor. I mean, he's going to see such a high volume. There's – with outside of injury, there's there's no way of him falling outside the top 12. Um, you know, he's actually, as of right now, he's expert consensus number one. Um I mean, as long as Roethlisberger's in there, even with the backup, he's still going to see volume. He's going to get his – absolute floor of 250 carries he's most likely going to push 275 300 325 carries on the season and then you're looking at he can reach 100 perceptions in in a season he's one of the very few running backs who can do that and i mean there's a new coordinator in town so if you want to say well is it going to be the same offense you know um it's still ben roethlisberger's there's also the practice that he's not been um practicing argument too you know what i mean yeah and i mean that's a little bit of a worry if you're worried about him you know last year he did start off a little slower um, actually, that's the stats right here. Is he he came in the first three weeks, ten for thirty two, twenty seven for eighty seven, fifteen for sixty one. You know that's not the Le'Veon you pick number one. And uh, you know if you're trying to nitpick, that's if if you want to go Gurley or Johnson or Zeke, whoever you want first. You know, and you're worried about that holdout. I, you know, I don't blame you for taking him number one. Um, you know, it is something to worry about. You know, he's had some injuries in the past. You know, sitting out another training camp again. And he had four hundred touches last year. I mean. If you want to worry about those tread on the tires, you know I, I don't blame you for that. Do you do you think he's a pro? Uh, do you think he's appropriately matched in that number one spot? Like, would you take him number one? Like, if you had the number one pick, would you would you grab him there? Yeah, you can see by my reaction. I'm like, I'm having a tough time saying yes, no. It's it's you're spitting you're splitting so many hairs with these top guys. I mean, I've seen the ceiling of Le'Veon two years ago. It pretty much shows his uh, his ceiling when he only played 12 games. He was on pace to break the single season yard from scrimmage he would have uh ran for 1691 that year had he th- this is the pace that f- year had 100 receptions for 820 yards i mean that's uh, last year that that beats everybody by far that beats what Gurley did last year that beats literally everyone of, of all time for all scrimmage yards so he has that ceiling in his back pocket and you know he the receptions if you're in a ppr you're gonna uh, i mean you're gonna see a floor of 60 receptions the ceiling is he was on pace for 100 so i mean 
if you're a volume guy, like I'm more of a volume guy because you know yards per carry, yards per catch, touchdowns can vary from year to year. Um, it's going to depend how how long he holds out for me, and that can make my final decision. Um, if he goes into to the games again with n- with no 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 chemistry with the team, just going in there running raw after a four hundred touch season, I might drop him to two or three. Um, but if he ends this, ends this, gets into some practice and gets in there, I'll I'll take him at number one. So s- some interesting numbers on Le'Veon Bell. He was the only running back last year who who had four hundred uh, plus carries and or touches, four hundred plus touches. He had four hundred six total touches. He, he also led the league. He had twenty seven touches a game. Um, some other numbers with him. It's like Killer B show, man. It's him Killer B Anthony show, Brown. man. He's he's uh he's had twelve hundred and sixty five or more rushing yards in three of the last four years. The, the year he didn't, he was hurt. And then in those seasons, he's also had 610 or more receiving yards. So you're looking at uh, 1,875 or more yards three of the last four years he's played, and, and that's made him finish as RB2, RB3, and RB1. So, I mean, yeah, I guess you can't go wrong with Le'Veon Bell. Me personally, I have Le'Veon at three. Uh, I don't want to worry about the injury risk with him. And then him not coming into training camp, I feel like he's salty because they don't want to give him any money. Um, me personally, I'd rather take the next player, which is going to be Todd Gurley or even uh, Ezekiel Elliott. I have Zeke at two. So uh, Todd Gurley, number two. What do you guys feel? Uh, I love Gurley. I think Gurley, I had him his rookie year. He uh, crushed it for <coughs> me. The next year, uh, of course, down year. I mean, but Jeff Fisher just obviously didn't know what to do. You know, with him, and then here comes Sean McVay, and he just unleashes the Todd Gurley that everyone thought he could be. Um, Todd Gurley, 343 total touches last year, so that was and that was ranked third. Uh, he 23, uh, he averaged 23 touches a game. So I mean, I know he had a couple big games, and if you take those big games away, then he obviously wouldn't have finished number one. But I mean, those big games pretty much won yeah, like everyone what, what was their that? fantasy was championship. What was that? That Niners game. When him and the Seahawks, he had some massive plays too. See, yeah, I, I think it was the Seahawks. he I got I lost in the semis in one league. I think I lost like one sixty two to one fifty nine, and the guy had Gurley. He had fifty five points, and Gurley had fifty five points, and I was I was fucking pissed. What about you? What about you, Anthony? How do you feel? I I have Gurley as my number two as of right now. Uh, like Tyler just said, he averaged twenty three touches. You said twenty. Yeah, he For averaged twenty three Le- touches. Le- Le'Veon again. was twenty seven. Le'Veon was 27, yeah. Uh, that's, that's Gurley averaged 20 points a game, yeah. fantasy I'm d- points a game. I'm just going to take the the guaranteed work touch. This is my personal opinion. Like I said, feel free to go how you want. But, I mean, touchdowns are a thing. You know, big plays, they're just – they're so unpredictable. You take one or two big plays away from Gurley and you swing them into Le'Veon Bell's way and, you know, the numbers flip-flop. And it's just if he's going to guarantee four more touches a game, that's four more chances for him to break off a big run. That's four more chances for him to score a touchdown. That's four more chances for him to, you know, just do whatever with the ball in his hands. So me personally, I, you want to take Gurley number one, go ahead. You want to take Bell number one, go ahead. It's it's splitting hairs. They both finished last year 80% of their games as a number one r- RB1. And when I say RB1, that's in the top 12. So 80% of the games, so at, at, out of 10 games, eight of those 10, both of them are finishing in the top 12 of running backs. So, I mean, you're splitting hairs here. You're looking at guys who are consistently week in and week out. They're going to give you a top 12 performance. So some, something else with Gurley is um, he actually le- he led the league. He had the most carries inside the red zone, most carries inside the 10-yard line, and most carries inside the 5-yard line. So there's just some interesting stats uh, to know. Another stat is also the Rams offensive line. Uh, they were ranked second in the NFL I- at 1.89 yards before contact. So that means that he was getting 1.89 yards before he even got touched. And then after that, you know, he's getting his yards after contact and whatnot. So, but that was actually ranked second in the league. So Rams O-line doing a good job blocking for him. Uh, also helps him out a lot, you know? So so you're more of a strength of schedule guy than I am. I don't really look – they just fluctuate too much for me. The, the defense is never finishing the same. Does Todd Gurley having the 32nd ranked schedule? Yeah, that that I just bit? saw that. Uh, yeah, I saw that too. That does worry me a little bit. Um, I mean, we're splitting hairs between one, two, three. hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, it does worry me a little bit. We'll see. I think the Rams offense, I mean, they had the best offense in the league. I mean, I'm not – it could affect them a little bit, uh, a little bit, having the hardest rushing schedule. But, I mean, when you're on the – technically the number one overall offense, I mean, I'm, I think it'll be all right. I mean, they were on a historic pace. And my only thing with Gurley is if, if those offensive numbers come down – it was basically like the Falcons like two, uh, two years ago. 
their offense was at a historic pace level where it's going to be hard to repeat. The Rams could still be a great offense, but if they drop their points per game and those touchdowns come back, point, uh, points could drop a little bit. Um, you know, if Gurley doesn't see 19 touchdowns, I think it's only two or three running backs that have seen 19 touchdowns have hit 19 or more touchdowns, in the, and that's in the history of the NFL. So it's going to be hard for him to repeat those 19. If he drops into the 13, 14, 12, those volume guys, you know, David Johnson, Le'Veon, Zeke, if they see around the same touchdowns and more volume, they could finish ahead of him realistically. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I, I agree with you on that. that Making some solid points right there. So Mike, you have anything to weigh in on this? or Anything? Yo, dude, it's just, look, hey, you put one foot in front of the other, and then, you know, sometimes you're like, you just, you got to take them, man. You got to take them. <laughs> Science. That w- Science. That was your Mike take of the day. He's number two. We're going to get the, the, <laughs> daily, the daily advice coming up shortly. All right, so number three, we have David Johnson. If you drafted David Johnson last year, <laughs> sorry. You were in some pain. <laughs> um. I mean, what to say about David Johnson, though? This is a guy who's going to – he's going to be the center of the offense this year. Uh, I mean, outside of Larry Fitz uh, as a receiver, I mean, who do the Cardinals have? I mean, they have a rookie they drafted. They lost Jerron Brown, John Brown. Um, it, he's going to be the focal he's point of the, the offense. One-man one man show pretty much. Yeah. Feels like. And, I mean, he's just out like, like Le'Veon Bell. He's a, he's a running back who could possibly catch 100 balls in a season. Um, he has that upside. So if you're in a PPR league, I mean, David Johnson's going to be, uh, I think he's going to be in that 25 to pushing 30 touches per game. Um, and he, he personally said himself, he's like, you know, I want to get to a thousand and a thousand. I want to be in that elite club. And the Cardinals franchise actually, you know, they, they support that. They support their players wanting to reach their personal goals. Um, so the upside with him, you know, is we've seen it. We've seen the number one overall. We've seen the 19 touchdowns. Which I don't think he'll be able to do this year at this offense because I think this is an offense that won't be at that level. But I mean, if he gets you over ten touchdowns, which is a realistic chance, and he gets you, you know, sixty to eighty in the air, plus eighty potential, and he gets you three hundred carriers, I mean, this is a solid workhorse. You know, number one RB weekly advantage that you're going to have right here. Yeah, I think people are sleeping on David Johnson. They think they forgot that just a year ago he was going number one overall. Right. I mean, he, and the guy he broke his wrist. Well, uh, week one, you know, I had him in the league, you know, hurt me. Obviously, I couldn't that bounce sucks. back from that. But, uh, yeah, man, this guy, he runs the ball, he catches the ball, he does everything. He's going to be the center point of that offense b- besides Larry Fitz. I mean, there's no real res- uh, tight end threat over there. You got Larry Fitz. I mean, they drafted Christian Kirk, who's going to get some run. I think they signed Bryce Butler, who's probably going to get a little bit of catches. But, I mean, outside of that, well, I mean, David Johnson is going to be, be the, the engine for that offense. Yeah, you're definitely getting a number one guy from last year for ADP three. That's I'm not mad at that. And he has a relatively safe floor with those with those uh, reception and targets coming his way. Even if he gets, you know, let's just say he's playing a, a run heavy de- or a good run defense, and he's you know on the ground he's 24, 42, and he doesn't run the ball good that game. You know, he's still gonna get you that, you know, Le'Veon Bell where he gets you those five six receptions for you know 50, 60 yards, and you know even if he has a down week, you know, looking at 14, 15 points just because he's He's a threat in the receiving game. Um, so it raises his floor because he just, you know, he always has those receptions in his back pocket. So even if he gets stuffed in the run, he's going to get you, you know, with those receiving yards, those res- big playability. I mean, he didn't look like he – it's only week one of preseason, but it didn't look like he lost anything because he didn't get legs injured. He got his wrist injured. Yeah, it's just a wrist injury. So, I mean, his legs are good to go. He, he's young. I mean, he's not – I mean, know, he's only 25 years probably old. probably entering the prime of his career realistically. Yeah, I mean, if you look at his, we t- I talked about consistency a second ago. Um, I mean, David Johnson in 2016, he finished in uh, 75% of his games were in the RB1 category. So that's three out of every four. He was, you know, getting you a top 12 performance. And then 93.7. So basically almost every game he's finished in the top 24 uh, the year he was he was healthy. So, I mean, you're looking at a guy that's going to week in, week out. You're not going to have to worry about him at all. And then Sam Bradford, I think, actually, his dink and duck style with high accuracy, actually high ac- more, high yeah, more really higher accuracy really than accurate. Carson Palmer, he might even potentially have a higher catch rate out of the backfield, you know, with with Sam Bradford as long as he's a starter. Yeah, Bradford definitely likes to dink and dunk. And um, I was uh, looking at the Cardinals and his stats and he, his – completion percentage has actually gone up i think it was like three or four years in a row he, had, he was at, he was at like 71 percent completion percentage or something crazy like that so yeah i like david johnson i think he's good and they have the 16th uh 
easiest rushing schedule. So, I mean, but like I said, he, he runs the ball and he catches the ball. He does it all. So, I mean, and when you're drafting these running backs, like the, the, they call them the, the big four running backs, I mean, ultimately you're just looking at to get your RB1. You know, it, it, it is really splitting hairs, you know, on who do you want. You know, maybe you're, you're a Steelers fan, you know, maybe you're a Cowboys fan, so you want to go get Zeke, you know. You're going to get the player you like, but, you know, ultimately you just want to – Draft a player who's gonna who you can plug in your RB one, you know, set it, forget it. You don't have to worry about him, you know, and and that's that. <coughs> all right, and so let's move on. To, do you have anything, Mike? Before we move on to number four? Uh, no, no, I'm all good. But uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, Antonio Brown, number four. What I mean, do you guys think Madden curse? Uh, I <laughs> low key think Madden curse. Uh, Yo, I'm, I'm a big AB I'm fan. A I, I like AB. He's fucking good. But I mean, he's already. Been l- helped off the field once, you know, and then he was caught limping off the practice yeah, I mean, field the other day. He they're saying the yeah, they're, said, that. they're like, oh, even though he limped off the field, everything's fine. It's like, yeah, that's what you say, even if it's not like they're gonna say that either way. So yeah, I, that sketches me out big time. I mean, he's a B. He's, he's double the number team, one receiver. Team, yeah, he's the number team. one receiver for a reason. His wide receiver finishes. The last five years, wide receiver two, wide receiver three, wide receiver one, wide receiver one, wide receiver six. God, what a monster. So you're so getting your, a so your floor is number six. My yeah, PP is so Hun- hard. Hundred plus catches, <laughs> five straight years, twelve hundred and eighty plus receiving yards, five straight years, eight plus touchdowns, five straight years. What what does he keep limping off with? Is it is it his hamstring or is it what? It, because remember he had that calf injury at the end of the year last year. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. Just it's something going on. Just with say his, he was like yeah. those muscle injuries are sketchy. Antonio uh, Brown is is my number one receiver. I have him uh, ranked as my, my number one receiver one too. I mean, he's going to consistently average ten plus targets a game. When you're talking ten plus targets a game, you're at that elite level. You know, there's only two or three receivers a year that see ten plus targets, and he's guaranteed. You know, those ten plus targets, and he's he scores touchdowns. Um, I'm going to look it up right now if I can see if I could find it, but I'm pretty sure he's been over ten touchdowns the last. He he's at eight plus touchdowns, five straight yeah, years. Yeah, eight, eight straight. So you're guaranteed those touchdowns too. He's went over a hundred receptions the last five years. You know his targets, 163, 154, 193. So he can reach that elite level. That year he had 100 or 18, 34 uh, yards through the air and 10 touchdowns. I mean he's, I mean I, that year I think he was the number one overall scorer. Whether you took running backs or receivers, so I mean you could be taking Antonio Brown at five or six. And you could have the number one overall s- positional score from the running back and receiver position and get that weekly advantage. So, you know, don't sleep on Antonio Brown because he can, you know, th- th- there's a term, they're weak li- uh, league winners. Antonio Brown could be a league winner for you. And he could take over games, you know. he has He's the receiver who has the potential to 30, 40, like, point in games in a week. And there's not – there's a handful of receivers can do that, and he's one of them. Yeah, last year I uh, finagled a trade. I think I traded. Oh, God, that was so great. Uh, I think I – I can't even remember. I, somehow I, I traded. Was, I, I right traded and I got and I got AB. It was right before that Titans game. Yeah, and we, we were watching. He, he had a bad week, and I, I traded for him. And then that week at Titans game, he had three touchdowns, yeah, and he up. he helped me win. If I didn't have him, I wouldn't have won that week. So, like Anthony was saying, he he's one of those players where he, you know he he get you a thirty burger, and he he alone can win you your week. You know, he actually averaged uh eleven point six targets a game. So I mean, like volume, big thing. If if uh, I want to get a receiver who's going to get ten plus targets a week, you know, more opportunities to score, more more points for my fantasy team. Especially Ben just throws it up to him, man. Like he literally does. He just chucks it to him, and yeah, just like Davey he just uh, he's a magician. Yeah, he, even Ben, uh, like he, he'll say that afterwards. He'll, he'll just be like, "Yeah, I threw it up, and AB does what he does, and that's it." <laughs> no, like yeah, I don't know what else to say. He's a monster. Hundred percent. All right, so we're going to number five. Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel, there's no Ezekiel. one. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, too. A good running back. That fight running back. Good running back. So I know, Anthony, I know you've been looking into Zeke uh, a little bit more than I have. Um, the volume. What do you? How do you feel about the volume? <sighs> this, this volume low could be massive. And now there's rumors coming out that they want to get him more involved in the passing game. I mean, if, if Zeke sees over 50 receptions this year, he could easily be number one. I mean, he's going to see th- – th- he's he's borderline a lock for s- 300 c- carries on the ground. And over the last two years, I believe he's averaged over 100 yards a game. So if you're in any type of bonus league too, which I'm in, I'm in, I'm in some of those where you get bonuses when the player reaches 100 yards, uh, I mean, Zeke's going to get you weekly bonuses. He's going to push 100 yards week in and week out. Uh, I mean, through the ground, he's going to probably 15, 16. If, you know, if he has a high side, 1,700 yards on the ground, he's just – 
a workhorse. They're going to feed him nonstop. And I think the Cowboys realized when they lost um, – uh, I forget which uh, offensive lineman they lost, and then they uh, had Tyron Smith go yeah, down. It was during Thanksgiving last year. Yeah, it w- what an, what a line means to them, and they signed some depth to help out with that. So if they do have injuries, and I know they drafted a second round lineman uh, last year, they were graded still, I believe, in the top. Uh, I know they were in the top ten, um, but Pro Football Focus ha- has them ranked back at a number two line. So I mean, if you're worried about Zeke having the box stack against him, I mean. Uh, yeah, that's a worry. But I mean, if that line's clearing lanes for him, he's gonna go in there and he's gonna get he, he's gonna get his. He's gonna eat. Um, yeah, yeah, Zeke. He finished with 268 total touches. So that was ranked 13th in the NFL. Okay, but it, he missed six games and he still finished 13th most in the NFL. If you if you took the average of that for a full 16 game season, I think he would have finished as the number one player with most touches i think he would have had 426 so that would have been 20 more than Le'Veon bell i mean with a a workload like that i mean he's gonna get 10 plus touchdowns easy you know i bet my dick that he gets 10 plus touchdowns you know (laughs) i mean he's a lot for like you said he could could get 14 15 1600 yards easy um i love zeke uh they like like anthony was saying there's reports that they're going to involve him in the passing game more which i think is is they should because I mean they just lost Witten, they just lost Des Bryant. I mean, they don't really have a true number one receiver. And I think Dak's going to spread the ball around a lot, and uh, yeah, why not just dump him the ball? I mean, he had, he's had a lot of plays where they throw him like a little screen pass, and he takes it sixty yards for a touchdown. You know, I mean, and the NFL is a copycat league, and uh, you know, there's they're seeing how teams are having success with Alvin Kamara, you know, uh, Todd Gurley. They're seeing these these. Uh, Backs out of the backfield have success, so you, you're going to see more teams throw to the run, throw to the running backs uh, for probably even more last year, this year than they did last year. Um, it's just they see success. You, you know, uh, he's had a high reception uh, yards per catch uh, last year. Like I was talking about, he season paced in that game uh, in his 10 game season. He would have 62 targets for 51 receptions. So if he even sees 60, 70 targets and gets around there. I mean, I'm considering moving Zeke up to my number one uh, if Bell holds out. Yeah, and I look, I look. He, um, if he, if if I watch his preseason games and I'm seeing him run some screens, he even said himself, he's like, uh, they expanded my route tree. He's like, they're giving me more unique routes that I never had in in the playbook before. So I mean, they're expanding his route tree, and if I see him run any kind of routes there, it's like, okay, these that looks like they're this is a realistic possibility of him getting even more to the backfield. Um, you know, I might slide Zeke up to my number one, and I, I'll put my money where my mouth is. I have the number one pick in the league, and I'll draft him number one. I mean, I saw I I saw Zeke last year, w- even with the suspension or the talk of suspension. You know, it was he, he postponed or whatnot. But I I even saw him going in like third overall last year with the suspension, and now he's ra- ranked uh, five. It's like, damn, dude, what that's that's a, that's a pretty good steal if you if you ask me. I almost like I I'm a Steelers fan, and I almost. If I had number one pick, I almost am thinking of possibly taking Zeke. Yeah, over yeah, for sure. Know. I mean, you can make an argument for that. Uh, I love Zeke this year. I think. For, I mean, if, if you're gonna give me a player who's gonna get the ball 400 times, I mean, dude, that's more than anybody in the league. You know, more opportunities to score. Like I said, more points for your fantasy team. Definitely. Let's go to number six, Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, Nine Anthony's Saints. hidden gem last year. God. I mean, I didn't. Th- I. I I do take credit, but I didn't think he would be that good. I just, I was like, I, I looked at the offense and saw the Darren Sproles role available. And every year that's been valuable in Sean Payton's offense. You know, you've had Reggie Bush have big years. Sproles obviously had big years. And I was just like, this guy has a chance to, you know, I watched him in the preseason. And this is one of the reasons I watched preseason is he flashed is he made some plays out of the backfield. He was taking a, you know, a screen pass and a, a, like a, a just a drag route and taking it and making one or two guys miss and taking it to the house. And I was like, okay, there's potential for some, you know, PPR value here. Do I think he'd be a top 10? No, n- not by any means. But, you know, you got to take shots in the late rounds of guys like this. Um, but yeah, I mean, Alvin Kamara is uh, – Alvin Kamara, t- 201 touches. So there's only 26 running backs that had 200 or more uh, touches, and Alvin Kamara had 21. No Ingram for the first four games, so he should see it all of the workload. I mean, passing, running, everything. Um, I like Kamara. I, I just don't know if he can – he. I, I doubt he repeats what he did last year. I mean, he he was on a historic pace. I mean, he I think it was like six point six yards per carry or something like that, like seven point yards per touch. Or it's so, something crazy. It's, in, it's S- insane. Something ridiculous. I mean, it's there's it was like the best ever by a rookie, and it's like for him to repeat that would be almost impossible. To to go above it is 
impossible, I think. So I think there's going to be a little bit of regression with him. Um, I mean, but I like him. If he's going to fall to you, if, like I have the ninth pick in one of my leagues, and if Kamara falls to me at nine, I'll, I'll take Kamara at nine right there. Like you said, for the first four games, you got no Ingram, so you know you know he's going to get all the workload and a good offense. Yeah, I mean, Jamal Charles, who's been one of the most – or was one of the most efficient backs of all time, I mean, he – he ran for 5.4 yards per carry in a season. Um, I mean, is he the next Jamal Charles? I mean, I don't know. It's it's possible. Um, but I mean, so even then, I mean, you know, you're looking at almost a yards per carry coming down if he is the next Jamal Charles. You know, Jamal Charles averaged 8.4 uh, yards per catch, so that could even drop a little bit. Um, there's definitely some, like Tyler touched on, there's definitely some regression coming. So the thing with Alvin Kamara is you have to – are, are the Saints going to give him more touches? I believe they'll give him more touches this year. Um, I mean, 80 catches out of the backfield, I mean, can he top that? Yeah, but, I mean, he could. He's one of the other running backs who could touch 100, so, you know, he might be that 100-reception uh, guy. So PPR is weekly safe. You know, it makes his floor uh, immaculate. Um, but, you know, the carries is the only concern with him. You know, is he going to be, you know, under 10 carries a game? Because that's where, you know, if he's not scoring 15, 16 touchdowns, I think he scored uh, – do you have on paper how many touchdowns he scored last year? How many touchdowns? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how many touchdowns he scored. I mean, if yeah, but he, I think it was 13, if I'm correct. But if he doesn't st- – which was almost a touchdown a game from when he took over from AP going down. If he's not scoring a touchdown a game and he's only getting eight or nine carries and his average drops to 4.8, you know, he's not going to have that same weekly output that he did last year. So that's something you have to take into consideration. Um, when you're taking Kamara, he might touch it from 200 to 250, 275, where these other guys are touching it in the 350 range to almost 400. You're looking at having the ball in their hands, you know, 100 plus more times, and that's just where it lies. You know, do I think I've watched him, and I think he he, he could be like the next Jamal Charles as far as efficiency goes, but there's going to be some regression in, in in the yards per carry and yards per catch. Um, and in the touchdown department, one per game, is that's a pretty high pace to do. Is it doable? Yes. I mean, if you see it again this year, you know, he, you might just be like, hey, he's, he's a touchdown scorer, uh, you know, but uh, he's going to need to keep those touchdowns up if those carries don't go up. So, um, I mean, if a touchdown's drop to eight or seven, where you draft Kamara, you're, n- you're not going to get your value. Um, so that's something you have to weigh into him a little bit. So, yeah, int- int- th- interesting stat with him. Sorry, Mike. Go go uh, interesting stat with him. Uh, he finished ranked sixth in the league he averaged 13.8 fantasy points a game and he was only getting 12 touches a game that was t- ranked 24th in the league so that just shows you how he was just it, his points per touch were just through hyper the roof efficient. it was just yeah highly efficient hyper, and, it's like yeah hyper efficient it, and something like that's highly unlikely to be repeated i mean he's, he's a good player and but i mean like he was only getting 12 touches a game last year this year he's for sure gonna have to get more than that i mean no ingram for the first four games and there's actually – I've read a couple of things. I think they might trade Ingram if, you know, if Kamara just takes over. Yeah, I I just – I think that – I think sophomore slumps, I think that – I think that Alvin Kamara, with Mark Ingram being out the first couple of games, is actually going to do the opposite. They, I, th- I feel like just having that power horse of Mark Ingram almost just kind of switched up the game for them. And I, I don't know as Alvin Kamara as a standalone mm-hmm. running back if he's going to be putting up the same numbers like that. As yeah. he did last year, I don't, I that's just, the point. It does happen yeah. with running backs. They when they get that full workload and they uh, and then also just like game tape, like there. I mean, it's like all these guys, like even Colin Kaepernick when he was first in the league, he was like this crazy quarterback. But then it's just, but then everybody figured out how he plays a game, and then yeah, the, you're making some solid you know points I mean? over there. Yo, dude, I'm fine, <laughs> bro. You're not hey, just all looks over there. You got some brains right or what? Foot. Hey, dog, you know, it's not liquid, it's not gas. These points are solid, baby. Okay, you know what I'm saying, dog? <laughs> I mean, his, history shows that there's going to be a sophomore <laughs> that slumps. I mean, whether it's Kareem Hunt, whether it's Alvin Kamara, what's, whether it's Leonard Fournette or... Uh, I mean, another. Leonard Fournette, uh, you could argue that he had freshman slumps. Yeah, you could. Uh, whether it's Christian really? McCaffrey. I mean, one of these, one of those four, there is a high percentage that one of those four is going to be a bust this year. You know, so, I mean... Yeah, so uh, like, uh, Mike, like Mike said, I mean, Letter Fournette kind of had a freshman slump, but if he's going to touch the ball 400, 350 times, I, l- I actually like him this year. There's less yeah, of a I chance of Fournette. him being a bust than there is, you know, with someone who's going to touch a 2, 250. All right. So, yeah, uh, another interesting stat uh, Saints, 1.88 yards before contact, ranked uh, fourth in the league. So, good blocking. I mean, I, I like looking at stuff like that. 
good, like I, I like looking at the line matrix and uh, seeing you know what lines are blocking better than than you know, the other lines. You know, I want to try and draft a running back whose line is actually blocking good. You know, I don't want to get a running back. Yeah, sometimes the volume's good, but if my running back's getting hit behind the line of scrimmage every fucking time he's getting the ball, I mean that's not that's not, not the best, you know. So good line for him. So that, I mean help, that helps Kamara. Yeah, what yards per contact means, if some of you guys don't know what that means, is basically like when you're getting the ball handed and you're running, you have basically two yards before anyone's even touching you, 1.89, versus where some will be negative. So you're getting the ball and you're almost getting, getting hit <laughs> before you you even able to make moves. So yeah. that can that can lead to some of that hyper efficiency, and that's you know or really yeah. The the, the Saints kind of have followed the uh, Cowboys blueprint. I think they've just been drafting linemen like in the first round the last couple of years. They've been stacking up picks, first and second round picks on Well, that's why I think that Ka- Kamara was such a sleeper last year, it was just because it was such a pass heavy team with Drew Brees there. It's like and nobody expected this crazy running back to come out of nowhere there. Yeah, I mean when you have Drew Brees too, you can't stack the box. So I mean that's obviously probably why they, you know he's getting two yards before anyone's yeah, even touching him. And then last year with the Saints, something I noticed looking into him is they had a one-to-one touchdown-to-rush ratio, which basically means for every passing touchdown, they had one rushing touchdown. And I believe it's over the last, I mean, almost all of Drew Brees' career. It's borderline two-to-one when it comes to that. So there's going to be some regression uh, for the rushing category and some regression for the uh, the passing category. I don't see it being a one-to-one. Again, where it's like Drew Brees throws one touchdown for every rushing touchdown. You know, even if it's 1.5 passing touchdowns for every one, you know, you might see 27 passing touchdowns for 16 rushing touchdowns, and that's going to affect the rushing touchdowns in a total for, for both running backs. All right, well, let's move on. Uh, so what next is, who's that, DeAndre Hopkins? Yep. At uh, seventh overall, DeAndre Hopkins. So for me personally, DeAndre Hopkins fucking savage, super good. But I'm not, I'm not drafting DeAndre Hopkins right there. I mean, I'd rather take a running back right there. Um, he, yeah, that's too I mean, high for me. Also. Yeah, I, I mean, I like, I like him. <coughs> I, I liked, to, I liked him last year. The, just being able to get him as a sleeper, just where he was at. But yeah, I think it's too high. So his fantasy finishes: wide receiver one last year. He had a crazy good year. Wide receiver twenty nine. That was the Brock Osweiler debacle. Osweiler. Uh, <laughs> Wide receiver four the year before that, and then wide receiver fourteen. So he's just too up and down, you know. And like I don't know why he's being drafted over. I think there's just a lot of Julio. Jo- I mean, like Julio Jones, you know. I, I think mean, there's a lot of wa- Deshaun Watson believers. Deshaun yeah, Watson that's for what sure it is driving up his price. I mean, but he's uh, an interesting stat on Hopkins here is uh, he's only had a, a hundred over a hundred catches once in his career. So I mean, it's, he's not a high PPR volume guy. I mean, he's get, yeah, he's getting catches, but I mean. 78 catches one year, 76 catches one year. But don't you know that the Michael Jordan of quarterbacks is there? <laughs> but Michael Jordan, yeah, he is good. Do you remember? <laughs> He's good. D- yeah, did you not? Th- that's what the, f- the, the the coach said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was <laughs> the most consistent receiver last year uh, as far as top 24 finishes, right receiver ones and twos. Uh, 86% of the time he was in the, the top 12. He had, he's had zero bus games, literally zero bus games last year. And if you look at Antonio Brown, Antonio Brown actually had – 28 percent bus games and i think that's where uh you know some of these some people are like you know he he did offer a lot of consistency last year um and that's something you know do i think deshaun's gonna throw 60 touchdowns what he was on pace for no i mean he was on pace for borderline he would have to break paint manning's record to stay what he was literally on pace for that last year um that's gonna drop down but there was a lot of consistency there last year um you know i think his i think his floor is pretty safe because he's gonna see a high target volume um, I think his numbers will dip down a little bit. I think a, a healthy Will Fuller there for a year. Um, uh, QT, 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 how do you say his name? <laughs> Kiki um, Cutie. Having another uh, receiver in the mix might take away a few targets, but I mean, he's relatively safe. You know, he's, you know, he is tied to a young quarterback who can make stuff happen with his legs move. Um, he will have two or three of those Deshaun Watson scrambles, moves out, throws a ball. He jumps over three players and catches a touchdown. I mean, it's just, it's just going to happen. Um, so, you know, he's uh, as far as target volume goes, you know, I think he's as safe as it gets when it comes to volume in the top um, top five. But he d- he hasn't shown a high catch rate um, when it c- over his career, too. So, I mean, you know, if 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 his numbers drop from I think it was one. Do you have the targets right there? Yeah, he uh, I think his targets last year were DeAndre Hopkins. He's number one. Most no- targets number now. one. Uh, where's the season targets? Is it on here? Oh, I don't think he has season targets on there. So last year he averaged 11.7 uh, targets per game. If he drops to under 10, you know, where Keenan, Julio, Antonio, Odell might be over just due to his catch rate. 
um, you know, he could finish behind these guys. But, you know, he's a pretty s- relatively safe first-round pick. If you if you don't like any of those uh, back-end first-round running backs, like if you don't like Melvin Gordon or Kareem Hunt or, you know, Fournette, you might even be able to get one of those guys on the way back, possibly, depending on your league, whether you're 10 or 12. Uh, you know, DeAndre, he's, he's a safe receiver. If you like him, you know, you're going to get – a ton of targets. He has big touchdown upside. He could, you know, he has big yardage upside. That's all there. So, um, you know, I think I have him ranked uh, fourth or fifth. I look at my rankings, but you know, he's he's a t- he's borderline. He's he's a top ten safe pick. He uh, he's kind of one of those guys. It's like I think he's touchdown dependent. I mean, he's good. He's getting a lot of yards. You know, like I said, he's only had a hundred catches once. His touchdowns over his career: thirteen last year, then four, eleven six and then two so it's almost like you are you going to get 10 plus touchdowns this year i mean i guess it's a good possibility with deshaun but that's not a gamble i'm willing to take with my first round pick if, i mean for my first round pick i'd rather try to get someone who's you know solid like I, I don't have to worry about it i know what i'm getting with him i mean i think wolf fuller being out you know deandre was just getting peppered with targets you know fuller coming back they said he's put on some 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 size you know and then they did draft kiki qt so, and I think they want to get the running backs a little bit more involved in the passing game as well. So, I think that's going to take away from some of his targets, and I and I doubt he finishes as the wide receiver one this year. Mike, you have anything? Uh, no, I lucky was adding <laughs> a story onto the Instagram. So, <laughs> that's the tech guy right there. <coughs> Just out of here. I mean, he has seen a 192, 150, 176 targets his last three years. Um, I mean, if Deshaun's healthy, you got to figure he's going to be a 140 plus target guy. It's going to land him in the top, you know, five six receivers. Yeah, he's seen he's seen 150 or more targets three straight years, and he's a, he's averaged 160 targets the last four years. So he, I mean, he's getting a lot of targets. And I don't take the Brock Osweiler year with the four touchdowns and low catch rate. I mean, that's that was a uh, debacle. That's going to be. I don't even know if there uh, you can get much worse than that at the quarterback spot. So. Um, I mean, if Watson stays healthy, you know he's gonna he's gonna push, you know, eighty catches, thirteen hundred, and you know, I would say above six is a floor for touchdowns, um, because he can high point a ball and he he's he's a guy who jumps over two three players and just picks it off the top of their yeah, heads. The guy makes some crazy comes down catches, with it. crazy crazy catches. All right, well let me ask you this: so the next player is Odell. Would you, if it's coming to you and and you're up there and it's between DeAndre and Odell, are you taking DeAndre or are you taking? The Odell. Me personally, I'm going with Odell. Um, yeah, I would go with Odell as well. <coughs> I would go Julio. Well, you didn't give us an option. Uh, you're right. I did. <laughs> 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 yeah, truly. I didn't want to tell you that because I wanted him. See? Uh, dude. Well, now I'm that's called draft him. strategy, guys. Right there. Don't let him know if there's a player on the board. Don't let him know. Well, hey, that, he's still on the board. And let him slide a, to you. That's another point. Is like sometimes it, you look at okay, say you have this PPR rankings, and if you're if the if PPR? you're go- if you got the per- if you got the per cassette rankings, dude, you might <laughs> fucking look at them wrong. But you might be looking at this and be like, oh, okay, oh yeah, DeAndre Hopkins, oh yeah, yeah, he's number seven, and then you're sleeping on number fucking ten, Julio Jones. You know, yeah, what are you yeah. doing? Hey, what are you doing? What are you? What are you? Not a scientist? Well, come on, guy. That's another thing to touch on. Um, I mean, everyone's gonna have the rankings. You got the ESPN rankings. You got like the consent expert consensus rankings. You know, the, the, the Yahoo rankings. All these, all these different rankings. You know what I'm saying? Uh, don't necessarily, when it comes to you in a pick, think like, oh, well, you know, DeAndre Hopkins, is he's the highest player available left. Like, I should take him automatically. Like, no, I mean, look who else is there. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, have your own personal opinion on who you think. You know, like like Mike was just saying, DeAndre's at seven. But, I mean, if I was if I was at set the seventh pick, I'm taking I'm taking Julio Jones right there. And he's ranked 10, but, I mean, I'm, I'm taking Julio. Yeah, I mean, don't be afraid to take a running back right there if that's what yeah, you don't, really yeah, like. Don't, yeah. You might, you might know your league and you know, oh, my league loves running backs. So um, I want to snag one of these running backs before because, you know, I know if I, t- if I don't take him here, the next four guys are going to take running backs and I'll still get that receiver. So it's kind of know your league. Um, if it's a new one, it's, if it's a new league, it's hard. But if you know you're playing with guys who, um, you know, I know some leagues, someone's going to take quarterback in the first round. Someone's going to take heavy running backs. Some of them are heavy, like a little he- like they're balanced. Um, so that's something you got to take into account. You know, don't just read off the sheet and take the next player. If you know. Your league loves running backs, then all right, take one of those running backs, come back, and you know, be like, okay, I'm, instead of taking um, Julio uh, Beckham or Hopkins, I'm going to take uh, Melvin Gordon right here, and on the way back, I'm going to try and get one of those three, or at least I'll be able to settle with Keenan Allen or Devontae. Okay. 
All right, how do you guys feel about Odell, though? Odell. Odell. Odell is trying to get paid, so I think he he needs to perform. He needs to go out there and ball. The thing with Odell that kind of, like, worries me with him is I don't know if it's just me personally, but maybe some other people feel like this too. There's certain players where I feel like when I don't have them on my team, they play really good. But then as soon as I draft them, they, they don't do good. Like, right. I, I've never had Odell, and last then year? last year I had him, yeah. and he fucking got hurt. Yeah, it's I like, dropped man, him you know kind of early too last year. I'm also notorious for drafting a player where it's like – Four years in a row, he's had like a hundred <laughs> catches and over a thousand yards, and I'm like, for sure, I'm taking him. And then like that year, he gets hurt. Like I don't know, it's crazy, but like you don't believe him when I'm wait, year one, year yeah. two comes around. I don't know what it uh, is. Okay, he's gotten a little better. I'll wait. Year three comes around. All of a sudden, when you grab him, I mean Odell's yeah. good. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna touch Odell at all. Like I said, if it comes to me, like I'm gonna draft Julio in that spot. I might even draft a different running back uh, ahead of him. I just think there's too many mouths to feed over there. I mean, you st- you got Ingram, you, you don't got Sterling Shepard, you got Barkley who's gonna catch the ball to the backfield, and it's like, I, I don't know. Do you, do you, it, it comes to down to though? Do you think that is an argument that it's gonna take away from him, or do you think it's actually he might he might spread percent. the field and leave him more open be more efficient yeah yeah yeah. i think it's gonna take away from him i think he'll still be good he'll still finish as like a top 10 receiver top five receiver but i just don't think i i don't know that's just my like i said it's my own personal opinion i'm yeah I guess right, well here's here's the argument for odell on the opposite side where you know julio's never scored over uh i, I have julio ahead as well in my rankings but julio's never scored over 10 touchdowns odell 12 13 10 three last year and four games which would have put him back at 12 so he's Borderline every year he's played he's the locked over the for ten touchdowns. Um, my wor- my worry is not actually so much Odell because he's actually went over thirteen hundred yards every year, um, and he's been ninety plus receptions. Um, and I I actually Mike I think having, you know Barkley there is going to make them have to key in a little bit more on the run because you know you're worried about the big play potential having which Ingram break out Shepard. Um, Mike Shermer's offense might even move him into the slot some, which could do wonders for him. It did wonders for Thielen and um, Diggs last year. Um, my worry is more Eli Manning. His just numbers as a whole have just dipped for the last four years. Um, if Eli Manning just falls off a cliff this year, that offense is going to struggle, um, and it's going to be hard for Odell to repeat that, you know, those elite years. But if he plays up to, um, you know, his, his let's just say like averages, you know, Odell's going to see 150 plus targets. Um, you know, he's finished with 10 touchdowns every year. He's had over 1,300 yards every year. He makes big play plays week after. You know, he makes big plays here and there. And I think he um, – I'll look at the stats right now. Um, he has 50% of his games uh, – let's see. Uh, he's he's a boom player. Um, 48.5% – so basically 50% of his games over the last three years have been wide receiver one, which is only second to Antonio Brown. So those are those top good. 12 receiver weeks. So Dell does go out there and deliver those um, – those week winning weeks and that's in 35 games versus 45 for Antonio. And I, I'm not sure hundred percent, but I believe on a per game, Odell is actually the number one, um, like top, uh, 12 performances like per game basis. So you get those week winning weeks out of him more, uh, more than you do some of these other guys, you know, number one receiver, uh, like I said, top 12, uh, Deandre Hopkins, 34%, Julio Jones, 43%. Um, and his, um, you know, his bust rate's at 24%. So, I mean, wide receiver one or two, it's uh, over the last three years, you have Antonio at 68, and then you have Odell at 68 as well. I mean, so he's pretty consistent week in and week out. He has those massive boom games, week winning, like you said, 30-point games. Uh, ever since he's been in the league, he's done that. And if you're in bonus leagues, he's taken 50-yard slants to the tu- for touchdowns. I, I don't know how it happens, but it just seems to happen. F- a 50-yard <laughs> slant? <laughs> yeah. He'll catch That's it and run the ball up the field 50, dude, 60 yeah, yards. Right, yeah, it's yeah. Just he, has those, he has those big plays yeah. where he just – He's like a he's like a home run. He's a home run uh, player. I mean, he, he's good. I just like it's, it's like it's personal We're opinion. Picking, you know? yeah. yeah, it's personal opinion. Like it's it's your fantasy team, so you want players that you kind of like. And I don't know, like I like Odell, but I just for that spot, I think I would pick a different player. Yeah, I would definitely agree too. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I I mean, I got burned last year by him, so it's like. It, you try really hard not to do that, but you, sometimes you can't help it. You get burned by someone like that. You're you're just gonna look for what's a better value there. Okay, uh, right next door behind that O line, Saquon Barkley. Saquon. Sh- Saquon. Barkley. Is it Saquon or is it Saquon? Saquon. There's no Saquon, H in there. Saquon. 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 Oh. Lips. 
Saquon. One run and he shoots up. So I know that we, <laughs> me and Anthony, kind of we kind of have some differences on 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 Shaquan. Um, I mean, I I watched a good amount of college football, so I've seen I saw him play, and I mean the guy was phenomenal. I mean he's just another home run hitter guy, you know, where he's you know eighty yard touchdown runs, you know, catching little screen passes and taking it seventy yards, you know. And he's on a good offense, you know. He get, you can't stack the box on him because I mean, like we said, you got Odell, you got Ingram, you got Sterling Shepard, so. I mean, I think they're going to feed him the ball, I mean, a, a good amount. I mean, how many touches do you think he, he can see this year? Uh, I mean, I'll talk about my worries about his his downside. I, uh, there's there's going to be first-round busts, so I just try and look at all angles of who could be a bust um, in the first round. But uh, his volume is going to be high. Um, I'm going to pull up the stats with uh, Shermer, but he is not afraid to um, feature a workhorse running back, even if they're a rookie. He had Trent Richardson um, as a rookie. Um, and he still fed him over 275 carries, uh, and I believe he had a, a, a. I'm trying to pull up the stats right now, but he had a solid amount of receptions, and that was at 3.6 yards per carry. So the, my thing with Barkley um, is, I think there's a possibility of him having some struggles as a rookie running the ball because he is a very side to side runner. He's looking for that home run every play. He's looking to bounce everything, and I mean, outside of that one big carry, he was dancing in the backfield. And if they would have took him down, he would have finished that game with five carries for you know, maybe negative yardage. Um, I mean, I'm nitpicking. I think he's going to see the volume. I think he's going to make some home runs. But my one worry about him, why I won't take him in the top five, top six, is I think he's going to have some of those games as a rookie where he's trying to bounce everything outside and he's losing yards. He led the he led the college um, – he led all of college in uh, um, yards lost as a running back last year. He was 57th out of 58th in yards per contact after contact. So these are signs telling me that – he, if, if the line's not good, which I watched the right side of the line, it still looks pathetic. It's a worry. The left side might have been upgraded, but the right side was just getting thrashed by the Browns. Um, I have some worries. He, you know, he could struggle out of the backfield. You know, you could see him in that under four yards per carry. Um, but I think he's, as far as the passing game goes, he's safe. You know, that's where he'll be able to uphold his value. But I think there's going to be a lot of boom-bust weeks with him um, where he's going to get you those home runs, but then he's going to have those weeks where he goes – 15 for 15 yards and might only catch two passes and you're going to be like this is your first round pick this is the reason why i'm not you know just i'm just not taking him in my top six so i still have him in the top 10 uh so i'm not saying i'm down on him but i just you know i see a lot of dancing in the backfield and these guys are a lot faster there was i think it was his third or fourth run if he would have cut the ball inside he could have picked up four or five yards in the game but instead he bounced it outside and only gained two yards and that's just something I worry about at the NFL level. The sa- everyone's faster. The safeties are faster. The DNs are faster. The D tackles are faster. The linebackers are coming in. Can he make that adjustment? Yes, but um, that's just my only concern with him. The volume I'm not concerned about. I just, I, I just don't like where he's getting drafted at. Yeah, the PPR rankings has him at uh, nine, but I keep seeing him go like four. I keep seeing him go super high. So it's just like for me, I'm just not. I, it's just I'm not even thinking about putting him on my team. Yeah, for me, I I wouldn't touch him in the first round. This is my me personally. I'd like I said, I'd rather grab like a Julio Jones or I don't know, like these some other players I could probably grab, you know. But if, I mean, if he was a fall to the second round for some odd reason, I mean, I'd I'd probably grab him there. But I mean, same here too. So I'm not trying to sound like I hate Saquon. Um, I'm just saying with my first round pick, I don't want to miss because if yeah. I miss in my first round pick, I'm basically behind the eight ball. And I got to catch up, and I'm just. You know, I'm trying to get as safe as I can with my first round pick. Well, what do you think? Like 40, 40 to 50 receptions? or? Yeah, I think he has a solid floor of 40 to 50 receptions. Like I said, Mike Schirmer is not afraid to feature a workhorse running back when he has them. Uh, I mean, Steven Jackson went over 300 carries twice under Schirmer. Uh, you know, 50 receptions plus both years. He hasn't had a huge reception receiver where you're touching, talking 60, 70 plus. Um, but they've both been in the, you know, Trent Richardson was 40 plus. You know, Steven Jackson was 40 plus. So, you know, I'd put a floor in the reception department at 40. Um, I just think it's hard for him to hit 80 with like the Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, just because you do have so many mouths outside of commanding the ball. I mean, you know, don't underestimate Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard get 100 targets. You know, Odell's going to see his. Ingram's going to see his. Um, you know, versus where you look at the Saints, it's you know Michael Thomas and then the, the running backs. You look at uh, Christian McCaffrey, it's um, you know Kelvin Ben or Devin Funchess and and Greg Olson possibly. You know, if he's healthy. Um, getting so then you look at David Johnson, another guy is going to be up there. You have Larry Fitzgerald, and that's it. He has a lot of competitions for targets out of the backfield, so that's why I don't see him approaching that eighty to hundred where these other guys can. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I think we, we, <laughs> yeah. we've Science. covered, covered Saquon though. What we think? So we all we all think he's going to be a great talent. I just 
I think so too. I just don't. I just we we I think we all kind of agree too. We're just he's a little too rich for our blood. A little too rich, yeah. yeah. And I mean, they they did sign Jonathan Stewart in the off season too. So I mean, I can't imagine them signing him and then not. Using him, right. and there's I mean, I he could vulture some touchdowns away. You <clears throat> know, like ask. Shaquan does the work, and then maybe they get inside the five, they spell, you know, Shaquan, and here comes Jonathan Stewart, three yard touchdown run. You know, and you're thinking like, what the fuck? Like, especially if he's making those negative runs in the goal line when you're short. You don't. I mean, if he has a couple plays where he gets negative yardage, it could, um, you know, Jay Stu is a veteran. He might just go in there, churn his two yards, get the touchdown. And that's that's a little bit of a worry. It's kind of like the same with you know Murray and Cook. You know, we'll touch on that guy later, but. Um, let me let me I mean, ask yeah, you John, something. Jonathan really Stewart had 12 carries inside the five last year, so I mean that he's he's a goal line back, you know. Yeah, I I had Jonathan Stewart two years ago, and he actually was pretty solid flex for me. Um, I was gonna say, uh, well, now I can't remember. <laughs> oh, oh, it's gonna say, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna ask uh, you guys are know better than I do. Uh, o line. How have the, how have the uh, Giants adjusted? Do, do you think that plays a factor? Like, uh, I, everybody, I feel like they're notoriously known for not having that great of an O-line. I mean, they had a bad line last year, and they did sign Nate Sh- Soldier, Shoulder Soldier. Uh, he was he was an average left, left, left tackle last year. Has, he's had a good history. So we'll see how that plays. And they drafted, um, is it Hernandez, is his name? Yeah, the, the guard. Second, yeah, the second, second round. round. So, I mean, uh, he's a second-round draft pick. You know, there's – yeah, they addressed it with the second round, but I mean, there's been plenty of second round uh, busts at the line. Yeah, I mean, Miami we're Dolphin has a lot fans. Of those. We're, <laughs> I think every second round draft pick we've ever had oh is a lineman's been a bust. And there's continuity too. You have two new guys coming in, so there's not even a guarantee that that left side is fixed. And like I said, the worry I had with uh, the right side wasn't touched at all. And I saw Cleveland's uh, D line just blasting through. It wasn't even Saquon's fault. He was getting the ball, and there was three defenders on him like instantly. Um, I mean that could affect not only the running game, the passing game. So this is an offense. This is an offense I think has the potential to be a high-powered offense, but this is an offense I worry because the line could be a low-powered offense. I mean, yeah, that Pro Football Focus has the Giants ranked as the 25th uh, best line, so that's that's not good. And then it's no good. their yards per carry was uh, in the middle of the pack. It was 1.44 yards uh, yards before contact. So like Anthony said, they they drafted a guard and they signed uh, that left tackle. So I mean, it should get better, but in theory, in right, theory, right. that's the thing we have to wor- like watch for. Like you can be the best back in the world. That's I mean, it's like that's also the argument for why Zeke is so good. A lot of people say, oh, well, their line's so legit. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. if, if Saquon gets some of these holes that Zeke's, I mean, he'll take it eighty yards in a, a flash. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, yeah, so the, on. the tenth uh, player well, here. That we might uh, finish it on this this tenth player just because we're almost running out of time here. So we'll just finish it on. So yeah, the tenth tenth uh, tenth overall player, uh, Julio Jones. Julio. Julio. So Julio. Anthony actually told me an interesting stat here. Uh, he was saying Julio's never had ten touchdowns, right? Yes, yeah, correct. And then uh, what was it? You wanted to say it. Yeah, he has fucking you eight can, of them you in can one steal game. My thunder. Go ahead. No, 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 you say, you say, you're the one who told me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, got, I got to pull him back up. So cool. <laughs> Anthony <laughs> okay, pulls, right. finds the facts, <laughs> and Tyler just. <laughs> no, no, I said he's, he's like the this one for Stanley McCoy last year. Yeah. Idiot. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, just touch on him, and I'll pull it up. All right, let me find him right there. I mean, I like Julio. I think Julio. I have Julio ranked right behind AB. So, like I said, I would, I would take Julio over. I'm taking him over DeAndre. I'm taking him over uh, Odell. I'm taking Julio over Sha- Shaquan. Uh, uh, I mean, when it comes to like Kamara and Do we Julio, even know his name? Shaquan, Saquon, yeah. Saquon, Shaquan, yeah. Shaquan. I don't even. Yeah, yeah, we'll, know by, we'll know about game three. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Julio Jones, his fantasy finishes: wide receiver four, wide receiver six, wide receiver two, and wide receiver eight. And those are the last four years. Uh, last four years, he's had fourteen hundred or more receiving yards, and uh, and in four of the five years, he's averaged over a hundred yards per game. So, like Anthony was saying, if you have if you're in a league where you get a a bonus for every time he gets 100 yards, four of the last five years he's he's averaged over 100 yards. You know. Damn. Yeah, and he's went over 80 catches uh, in each of those four years. Um, I I still feel like Julio has some untapped potential that, you know, if he can get that those high targets again, he can see those. I mean, he had 100, 104 receptions one year, 136 receptions. Um, I actually think Calvin Ridley is going to help him a little bit. I think uh, yeah, Calvin I Ridley. Um, you look at back when it was Roddy and Julio um, years back, and he has that other receiver outside to help. That was a crisp route runner, like making some plays. Um, you know, he was looking at the 15.2 yards per catch. I'm looking at it right here in 17.8. Um, that was his first two years with them, and then he got hurt the next year. Um, 
But I mean, I think it's only going to make him a little more efficient uh, this year, having Calvin Ridley outside. They still have some new. Um, it's a second year in a system, and Matt Ryan. Uh, you know, he's had multiple coordinators, but every year, every time he's had a new coordinator, that second year, you see an offensive st- statistical jump. And he was actually, I think it was the number two or number three quarterback in pro yeah. football focus. Like, number he two. still played well. So it wasn't like Matt Ryan was out there being a scrub. They played well. They moved the ball. They were actually pretty high in yardage a- as a team. They just, red zone efficiency was the problem with that team last year. Yeah, I think uh, with Matt Ryan was, uh, he had zero games. Zero games of three or more passing touchdowns last year. So that's, I mean, you're looking at a guy who just won the MVP a couple years ago, and then the next year he, he, he didn't have a single game where he threw for three or more uh, passing touchdowns. So I mean, obviously you you would think that would change, and he's going to have some games where he throws for three, maybe even four touchdowns this year. So, um, I love Julio. I think he's a savage. I like I like I like his ADP. I like where he's at. I like that you can sneak and and grab him. I. For me, I don't – I'd rather – I don't know. I, I'd rather not have him on my team. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, I know you You are You think he's too boom or bust, right? Yeah, it's just like I always see – it's just like he, he'll have one good game, but then he'll have three games. And he just – he's like – for me, he's a guy on your roster that I feel obligated to play him every week, and it doesn't feel like he gives me – the, he doesn't give me the numbers. He's not that consistent I'm, I'm, enough. Yeah, yeah, it's just like I'd rather have a guy who's just getting, especially for PPR, someone who's just getting receptions, and I know at least like his floor is there. Like, yeah, his ceiling might not be through the roof, but I, I at least know that I'm going to get that 10 to 12 points from them every week. I'd rather have that, uh, like, pick and choose those guys and have to play Julio Jones every week hoping that he has a crazy game where he – gets three touchdowns and you know whatever it is so i think it's a little bit of a <coughs> semi mis- misconception is you look at the bus rate games uh and julio sits at over the last three years 23.91 antonio brown 24.4 michael thomas 25.8 um deandre hopkins yeah he had a bad quarterback so 27 i mean he's still on the same bus rate with uh these elite receivers um where he's a little higher than these other guys, where they're not, is it's the wide receiver three range. So it's still a mediocre game, um, but it's not that like top 24 finish. He's 21% versus where um, Antonio Brown is 6% and um, Odell 2.8, which is uh, – I didn't know it was that low. Um, Michael Thomas 10, DeAndre 10. So he has those middling games to where it's just an average game. But when it comes to bus games, he's the same as the other receivers. Um, he's 54%, every, so that's every other game. Uh, he's going to be in the top 24, and 43% of his games are top 12. So he is a little bit more boom bust, but his bust games are pretty much on par with the other elite receivers. Uh, an interesting stat with him is, so he had 19 red zone targets, one touchdown. I think that's that's like insane. wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially for a guy like him who he can – Literally, he just mosses people. I think that one touchdown he had was when he mossed Malcolm Butler. He literally just ripped the ball out of his hands from behind him. There's one specific play that Julio did where I was just like, I don't want the. He ran like a button hook route, and before the play ran, he was like arguing with the coach about the like about the play. And then they go and do the play, and then he he does a button button hook. And then like the ball goes over his head, but like he he came around too early. Like he can tell like he did he he came too early on his route, and he like threw his hands down. And he I don't know he the way his it was almost just like his attitude. He was like determined that the play wouldn't work based on an argument before. I, and I don't know when I, I, ever since that I was just like yo screw this guy. I'm, ne- I'm I just I just the, his I, personal I, feelings. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I feel like that's my aspect. Hey, but I mean, podcast, it's fantasy. But, you, I mean, but I really after that, I just I, I he just didn't seem like a player that just is like, okay, coach, I'm gonna do this. He he seems like a player that's gonna. He's like the all star. He wants all the touches. He wants, and I just don't want. I, I I prefer not to have that on my team. Look, if he's in the second round and he's still there, or he's, if he's in the second you know, round. Yeah, and, and look, yeah, and I steal. If I can swipe him like that, you know, just I, I'll definitely. Definitely, yeah, he's in the I'll draft round. him. I'm not saying I wouldn't draft him, but I'd rather not have him on my team. Yeah, but like, well, like we were saying, it's, it's it's fantasy, so you know you you want you want to have fun ultimately, and you know you want to draft the players that you like. Like, I mean, I love Julio, you know, so I want to draft him. Mike is saying, you know, like Julio's good, but he's not a fan of him. He doesn't really want him on his team. He'd probably go somewhere else. So you know, I mean, it kind of it's like preference. You know, what do you you know what do you like? Yeah. All right. So here's so if you had to, if you had to take a guess, you guys even out there can guess as well. How many 
10 plus touchdown seasons did Jerry Rice have in his first 10 seasons? Any, any guesses? Four. Four D. <laughs> did you just steal my phone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me and my, no, I said 4D. Four D. Four D. Four D. Four D. Four D. Okay. So he had a thousand touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So what? So that's right. All right. So that's that stat is actually zero. So Jerry Rice, one of the, the greatest receivers, if not the greatest receiver of all time, had zero ten touchdown games in his first ten seasons. After that, 15, 13, 15, 10, 14, 13, 17, 9, yeah. 22. He, I mean, he played till he was like a dinosaur. Uh, 22, 15. So the the argument that Julio can't uh, regress into mul- uh, double-digit touchdowns when I personally think he's one of the most talented top three receivers in the game, if not the most talented receiver. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he was with uh, Ben and Roethlisberger seeing 190 targets, I don't – he might put up almost 2,000 yards in a season. Um so basically what the point is going to he's one of the most talented receivers in the league so it's not it's not like we ha- history hasn't seen a receiver like Jerry Rice I mean he's one of the most if not one of the top 3 receivers of all time 10 seasons he didn't score over 10 touchdowns after that he just went full ham and it was 10 touchdowns every year after that pretty much so it's not an unrealistic possibility that Tyler touched down with what is it 16 19 red zone targets 19 red zone targets one touchdown yeah let's just say he catches half those yeah, I mean, yeah, it's half those fifty percent that puts him at what do you say nineteen? Nineteen, yeah. So it's eight point five and eight or nine touchdowns. That's just alone. He's a big play guy. He can make two or three big play touchdowns outside of the twenty yard line, you know. And you could be looking at a twelve, uh, twelve touchdown season from Julio that you get in the second round, and he shoots for over sixteen hundred yards. I mean, this is this could be your second round pick, and you could have, you know, maybe you have uh, you're at the five you, or six. You take a, a top flight running back. You take like Ezekiel Elliott, and you get Julio Jones at the two, and these guys are just week after week just churning out 20 point games for your team. I mean, it's 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 not on your list to have that with your first two picks. I mean, yeah, I think uh drafting Calvin Ridley def- definitely helps him and then Sanu as well. I mean, you it's like you can you can double Julio, but then I think Matt Ryan's just going to eat with those guys. I mean, underneath, you know what I'm saying? And you got the running backs out of the backfield that can catch Devontae I mean, and Tevin Coleman, so He's definitely going to have s- some good games this year, for sure. That's 100%. There's going to be times when they like you said, they're going to leave him open. They're not going to double team him. I mean, y- you can't. There's just too many weapons on this team. I mean, you you can, but then you're just it's like pick your poison. I mean, I guess in a sense. All right. Well, w- that's uh, the top ten. We just finished those real quick. Uh, we're, we're gonna have part two in we'll, a moment. We'll, we'll break down eleven through twenty in the in the part two. <coughs> part two. Oh. <laughs> All right, that's guys. Well, thanks for <laughs> listening. I appreciate it. Like Mike said, follow us, Average Bros underscore Fantasy Football on Instagram. Yeah, we're posting on there a lot. Um, you can also follow us on all – I said this in the beginning of the podcast, but if you made it to – look, you just listened to this entire podcast. Wow, way to go. Thanks. You're so good. And if you're my friend, wait, hey, if, you know, I appreciate you just in general. Thank you for listening. Uh, we're Yeah, follow us on everything. Go check out the website, AverageBrosFantasyFootball.com. Also, what else we got? Yo, we on Twitter now. We out there. We're on uh, Facebook. Check it all out. All that is Facebook.com, Average Bros FFP. Uh, Twitter.com, Average Bros FFP. Go check them all out. And uh, classic sign-off. Suck me.